You are bad. You are trash. You are a bot who can't left click properly. But don't worry, because I, Mop the Pop, the Messiah of Gaming, am here to show you how to get good at Minecraft PvP. Aye, before I tell you how to get good, you need some awareness regarding the game. As I'm sure many of you have noticed, there has been a sudden and substantial increase in the amount of sweats than players who breathe really heavy with liters of carbonated water leaking out of their pores as they click really fast and hit you with that quick L, even if they lose. They have these types of skins and name themselves after SAT vocabulary words or randomly generated letters and numbers. In other words, the ideal gamer. In fact, there are only two types of players in Minecraft. The sweats, and the spastics. Oh, and the hackers. So today, I'm going to help you level up. By the end of this video, you'll become a full-fledged sweat ready to hand out L's to other players. So what do I mean by your setup? Well, your setup refers to your computer and your computer's input devices, like your mouse and keyboard. Now I'm not telling you to suddenly invest $3,000 to purchase a new PC, a new Logitech gaming mouse, a new epic RGB mechanical gaming keyboard, but if you're playing on one of those 2010 Dell laptops your dad impost bought from Costco with a stock trackpad and the grimy keys, you're probably not going to win unless you're against another bot. Like if you play and your game looks like this. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit harder to aim and click on other players. That being said, you don't need a great PC or laptop to run Minecraft. Even if you're gaming on a toaster, there are a ton of things you can do to raise your FPS, which I'll discuss later in the video. In terms of your input devices, I'd recommend purchasing a mouse that has configurable side keys. These make it much easier to hotkey or swap between the slots in your hotbar, which can help a lot during PvP. When setting up your mouse, make sure you have a suitable DPI. DPI is basically how fast your cursor moves across the screen and how sensitive your mouse is. Believe it or not, you actually have to aim in Minecraft. And because you have to aim, I'd recommend lowering your DPI and in-game sensitivity. You don't want to be playing like this. Also, make sure to disable mouse acceleration in the mouse settings. This will make your aim more reliable. For me, I have my DPI set to 800 and in-game sensitivity set to 50%. This will vary for everyone, so make sure to experiment with different scents until you come across the one you prefer. So you've been hotboxing the bathroom stalls at your school with the mango flavor, the mint flavor, but you still don't feel like you fitting in with the cool kids. <laughs> oh. Try vape, a client that will surely demolish your competition. Except you shouldn't, because vaping is bad, and vape is even worse. Listen, if you're cheating in Minecraft, you need to stop vaping, get your sorry ass to the gym, and start pumping. For real though, the client that I recommend is the Lunar Client, especially if you're on a dogshit PC. This client gives you the standard juice, a ton of useful PvP mods like Toggle Sprint, Potions, Dads, Keystrokes, blah. But what makes it stand out is the FAT FPS boost. Other than Lunar Client, there's also Badline Client and PvP Lounge, both of which are still good. Just don't download Sus Clients because you risk getting banned. Okay, before you do anything in-game, go to your Minecraft launcher client and allocate more RAM to the game. 4 is the magic number. If you have more than 8GB of RAM, then feel free to allocate more. Next, go to control panel and maximize your CPU's performance. Alright, so for your video settings, there are a couple options to make your game run smoother. You can turn all of these down, like graphics, smooth lighting, render distance. Turn your max frame rate to unlimited. Definitely turn VBOS on. 
and here are my other settings. Make sure your autosave is not on 2 seconds because that will cause you a lot of lag spikes. I just put it at the max 30 minutes. Particles I keep decreased. The first thing that usually comes to mind when you think of Minecraft PvP is CPS. How fast you can click. However, I'm here to tell you that CPS doesn't actually matter as much as you think. You see, when PvPing, you should always keep this in mind. Aim is greater than CPS. If you're clicking but you can't aim, you're still going to be shit at PvP. What matters the most is getting the first hit. You can always strafe and W tap to chain more hits. That being said, clicking fast does have two main advantages. One, it reduces the knockback you take and two, it improves your hit registration. So what does this mean for you? It means you're able to get continuous hits. Alright, let's dive right into the first clicking technique. Jitter clicking, or as it's called scientifically, induced arthritis. So what you're basically doing is you're flexing your arm, mainly your forearm, to vibrate your fingers. It sounds pretty dumb, it is pretty dumb, but anything! anything to get better at Minecraft PvP. So here's what I found to be the easiest and most consistent way to jitter click. You want to have both your index and middle fingers on the left mouse button and tense up your forearm. It'll look like this. Here's something to keep in mind. Don't jackhammer your mouse while jittering. If you're smashing the living shit out of that left click, your aim will be equally as shit and PETA's gonna get you for abusing your mouse. Try jittering lightly. Make it a goal to maintain a constant 10 CPS. If you're flexing your arm to the point of a seizure just for the extra 2-3 to three CPS, I salute your dedication to gaming my friends, but your muscles are gonna be fried. Anyways, just jitter at your own pace and don't go overboard cause over time, You'll be building up that forearm muscle so you'll have more stamina and control and you already know how it goes down in quarantine! Minecraft all day and when you're not playing Minecraft, oh you rubbing one out! Basically, you can expect to look like this when it's over. However, as I've already made sufficient gains through the ladder method, I don't really jitter click. The second technique I'm about to show you is the one I prefer. It's called butterfly clicking. It sounds pretty soft but this shit goes hard! <gasps> Crazy stuff! It's a technique that will get more e-girls drenched than a double chest of diamond blocks. I know it's kind of crazy if you think about it in regards to how many e-girls you're gonna get. It's kind of perplexing. Here's how you do it. You shift the position of your palm slightly upwards and place your index and middle fingers on the left mouse button. You should form an arc with your fingers. I find that having this grip position makes it a lot easier to aim. With all of that being said, focus on one clicking method to perfect. If you find that you're uncomfortable with both of these techniques, stick to your original method. Even if you can't click over 10 CPS, don't stress about it too much. There are plenty of great gamers who don't click fast. Strafing is how you get combos. You ever against a player and you're getting flawless, combo to oblivion and you just wanna die? It's cause that player is pressing A and D. Listen, strafing is not hard. Here's how you do it. You land a hit, you press either A or D, and you hold it. When you get hit again, switch to the other direction. Rinse and repeat. Now the effectiveness of strafing is dependent on your speed. If you have speed too, strafing becomes a lot easier and more potent. That's why if you don't have speed, you always lose to players with speed. So if you're in a situation like that, you don't have speed, the other player does, there's a simple trick you can use. Get high, turn your FOV all the way up, and start spazzing out. You know what they say, fake it till you make it. Thank you for listening to my TED talk. In all seriousness, I don't think you can or should generalize strafing into one method. What I mentioned earlier was the most simplistic form of it. To strafe better, you have to understand the purpose of strafing, 
Why are you strafing? Well, it's because you don't want the other player to hit you, but you want to hit the other player. So, to effectively strafe, you have to make your movements as unpredictable as possible. Watch the other player. Which direction is their head facing? Strafe the opposite way. Force them to have trouble tracking you. That is the essence of strafing. W tapping, the fundamental method to deal more knockback and string more combos. If you've heard of this term, good. If you haven't, also good, cause you're about to get three times better. Oh, but mop the pop 390 is so zero. Shut the heck up, this video will help you improve, okay? Stop sounding like my sleep paralysis demon, you're not him, Zen. If you've ever PvP'd before, you would know that you deal more knockback while sprinting. However, that only applies for the initial hit. W tapping allows you to continuously start your sprint again and again and again so that you get that extra knockback from sprinting. Alright, W tapping isn't as simple as it sounds. Well, maybe it is, but there is a correct way to W tap and an incorrect way, just like everything else. I'm like, why does life have to be so hard sometimes? I'm like, come on, come on. <laughs> You don't want to spam W like you're fingering your butt. Instead, you want to be more rhythmic. Tap only after you've hit the other player. Notice how I'm not tapping more than I need to. Stop your sprint such that the other player is just outside your range. Block hitting is another very popular method to increase the knockback you deal. Like W tapping, block hitting resets your sprint and stutters your movement, increasing KB and combo potential. Now, the main difference between block hitting and W tapping is a space you create between yourself and the other player. You see, when you lift your finger off the W key, your player stops moving entirely. When you block your sword, however, you still are able to move forward, albeit at a much slower pace. And because you still move while blocking, you create less space between yourself and the other player than you would if you were W tapping. Taking this into account, block hitting is slightly more effective than W tapping if you don't have speed. Without speed, you lack the movement to quickly cover the space between yourself and the other player. That being said, I personally prefer W tapping to block hitting even without speed because it's pretty difficult to maintain good aim when you have to block and click fast. Once again, aim is the most important aspect during PvP. Do not sacrifice it like I sacrificed the little orphans in my basement. Alright, I'll leave it to my good slave pal, Victory8912, to teach you how to block it. So what you want to do for block hitting, it's basically the same as W tap. So blocking, uh, it's, it's almost like uh, it slows down your sprint. So by blocking and releasing it, you're like, you know, doing stuttering your sprint the same thing as a W tap. So what you want to do, like W tap, you want to do it when the player turns red. So it's like when I hit him, when it, when he turns red, I want to block, right? And then you want to hold A and W. You don't want to W tap and block it because that would just stutter your movement even more and make it easier for people to combo you. So uh, let me just show you. Ah yes, rotting, the bane of my existence, and the light of my PvP expertise. God, I love rotting. You're basically reducing your opponent to the same level as a fish, and let me tell you, <laughs> them fishies finna get sliced. Alright, here's how you do it. So you want to rod before you try to hit your opponent. Once you see that they take enough vertical knockback from the rod, you want to hit them. This allows you to get the first hit, because they're already up in the air, which gives you the superior reach. Another tip with the rod is to hockey back to your sword after releasing it. This way, it doesn't use up any durability, 
and allows you to spam the living shit out of your opponent. Now this isn't limited only to rods, you can use other projectiles like eggs and snowballs. The main point is, having these items helps you get the first hit. And once you get that first hit, if you apply all the principles I talked about in this video, it's going to be an easy GG. When PvPing on level ground, you wanna Look at the top of his head! Aiming at the other player's heads gives you more reach. Specifically, try to target the area between their eyes. This is the reason why players with good aim dominate PvP. When PvPing on slopes and elevation, you always want to try to occupy the low ground. Being lower than the other player gives you more reach. You can land hits on them, but they won't be able to touch you. So, what do you do when you're against a player who's better than you? Well, if you can't match them in aim, you need to match them in movement. The main thing here is to focus on trading hits. Don't let them get the first hit on you. Observe their strafe pattern and intercept them. What I mean by this is that if the other player goes to the left, you also want to go to the left. Mirror their strafing. This effectively minimizes their advantage in aiming. If they get you in a combo, escape as soon as possible. To do this, increase the knockback you take. Stop swinging, turn around, and hold W. The last thing you want to do is to keep swinging at them when they got you in a deadlock. And with that, I have completed preaching my PvP wisdom. If you follow all of the steps in this video, you are well on your way to becoming the sweatiest sweat to tread the earth. Remember, like everything, PvP comes with practice. Get on some PvP servers and start your holy conquest. I wish you the best of luck. You are no longer trash in my eyes. Thank you. If you liked the video, please leave a like, please subscribe, please leave a comment, and goodbye.